Hi, right, greetings. This is going to be a teaching of the simplicity of the Word of God. He's Jesus Christ, the living embodiment of the Word. The third member, the second member of the triune Godhead. He came in the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the one, one Lord and one God. The Saviour and God of all mankind, Jesus Christ, the prophet greater than Moses who was prophesied to come, the branch who uh, it speaks in Zechariah uh, that Joshua was a, a type of Christ, a high priest, as Moses was a type of uh, God and Aaron was a type of Christ and there's many types in the Old Testament as Hosea uh, clearly states that the Lord spoke in times past uh, uh, through the prophets in shadows and types so the whole uh, Old Testament and Judaic covenant is full of types of Christ types of the word of God the straight and narrow word and they are identical in, in teaching in essence in heart it's the same word uh, grace from grace so it's going to be a simple comparison between the apostasy in olden times and in Judaism which carries through to today so the apostate Judaism because Judaism is uh, broken it's broken off from the branch I've done a diagram I'll show you that in a second and the and the uh, establishing of the New Testament the new and everlasting covenant of Christ, of his death, burial and resurrection and his ascension into eternity where he was sent from by the Father to die for all men, Jew and Gentile. So if you are a Jew today, you need to be grafted back into the holy root and the branch who is Christ because Judaism is not going to save you. So I just want to simply show, um, I've been studying um, how the, the secret societies have gone about to destroy both Judaism and Christianity by secret craft and machinations and there's a, um, some works done in the 1970s which has kind of inspired this simple it's just a valuation of, of what's been going on uh, that, you can actually get that free online so this, this um, Rabbi Marvin S. Antelman, he in the 70s he'd done a work on quite uh, there's two volumes and uh, you can get I think you can get the first one free as a PDF format but he reveals all the machinations of the Jesuits the apostate Jews um, and then he he held to rabbinical uh, Talmudism, but I'm going to show you that that is also apostate that that's not going to cut it for the Jews to be saved and uh, the, the Old Testament clearly shows that Jesus was the Messiah it's just because the uh, Jews are hardened in their unbelief that they, they stop their ears when they ever hear of Jesus Christ so the, the Holy Word does clearly show that it just takes belief, it takes faith but unfortunately and sadly the Jews have, um, don't want to know they don't believe so they don't they uh, cut their ears off and then they remain ungrafted out of the way and if they die in their sin and unbelief because today we have the Son uh, God sent his son and that's the only way to, to for salvation for everlasting life and if you're a Jew you're of that root but you're ungrafted and if you're a Gentile you, you are grafted into that root although you were never part of that root in the first place you are separate from the seed of Israel but uh, today you're Jew and Gentile all men can be saved whether you're um, a cursed Jew, an apostate Jew, or any Jew, you can be uh, redeemed and receive the the uh, everlasting rest restoration of the old covenant in the new and everlasting covenant, which was given and offered by the spilling of God's blood. Jesus Christ shed His holy, precious blood.
to redeem all sinful mankind from the fall since Adam and Eve. Where, where sin was born and inherited in the human race. So there's a simple chart and I'm going to draw all over it in a second. But it shows the simplicity of the, of the word of God who is Christ and the apostasy of both Judaism and Christianity. So I've done a diagram of the, the Old Covenant where I'm going to read the scripture from Zechariah which clearly shows that the, the covenant's been broken but it was continued faithfully by God. God never broke his covenant with, with Israel. They're still in the promise but they're ungrafted. And uh, so this, this diagram shows the root of the Old Testament, then the breaking of the covenant in the time of Christ, and then the Jew today who's blessed, and then the Jew today who's cursed. It's like a dead branch, cut off branch, no free, wicked, cabalist, or or just totally unbelieving. Uh, that that would be a more of a that's more of a wicked Jew who wickedly does evil. That's a more like an agnostic Jew. That's a sort of uh, faithful Judaic Jew who uh, follows rabbinical, uh, rabbinical Judaism and still holds to the Torah, still has faith in the Word of God, but has rejected the Lord, so they're ungrafted. They need to be grafted back in. So that's Christianity today, the branch is Christ, the same root, the same root as the uh, Israel. And I've likened it to the um, the, rod, the, but the rod of uh, Aaron that budded without being rooted in to show the grace of God. There's the root, there's the trunk, and the branches, and the fruit, fruit bearing branches. The same for the Christian, you can only bear fruit if you're grafted into the, into the branch, into the vine, is Christ. And if you're ungrafted, you don't you can't produce any fruit, as the Word of God says. So you, you become a barren, you become become a dead stick, a bit of dead wood. So you need to be if you if you're falling away or backslidden, you need to confess your sins and to be regrafted back in, so that you're neither Jew nor Gentile. You're one in Christ Jesus in the in the vine. There's a simple diagram of the fulfilling of the. The old covenant into the new covenant. It's the same, same word, same Lord, same God. So there we have it. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate the apostasy that I've, what I've learned through study today, of both Christianity. There's the straight and narrow way, the simplicity of Christ. There's the old straight and narrow way given to the old covenant uh, excuse me um, Abraham the Abrahamic promise and the Mosaic promise and then the breaking of the covenant by Israel for rejecting their Messiah and so there's only a few in that area that were saved and grafted into the new and everlasting covenant is Christ so I'm going to get me a drawing board so, um, I'll start with Judaism. So, basically you've got the truth, or the old way, which was true. It was true in the Old Testament sense, but it, because it's completed in Christ today, it, it, it's untrue. So all Judaism is apostate, because it's broken off. It needs to be, Judaism is uh, Christian. Christianity is the completion of Judaism. It's the... Uh, Mark 2, it's the, it's not separate, it's the same, it's just that Judaism has rejected Christ, so it, it remains broken off, whereas in, in the uh, branch you, you have both the Old Covenant, you have the same word, the Deuteronomy, with the same heart, mind and will of God in, in one half of the Bible, and then the other half is the New, the New Testament, it's all the same but not for, not for Judaism. And they hold to rabbinical tradition, which is they've forsaken, they go beyond 
there was a time where they had the right, because the Lord said to the Samaritan woman um, that the Jews know what, who they worship and salvation is of the Jews, that's what he said. So there was a time when the, the Jewish um, lines had, had the right of inspiration, all the prophets were Jewish, all the patriarchs were Jewish, but well, there was exceptions that were grafted in to the, to the vine, uh, like Ruth. And um, but the whole root is uh, the, the, the bloodline of King David. The root of Jesse is all all Jewish. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All the promises to them. So um, we have the uh, now. There's in in what Rabbi. Marvin Antelman revealed in doing research was that the same people that have tried to undermine Christianity and the the Word of God in the King James Bible are just a few thoughts about why why I believe there's a lot of apostate Christians on the right who are saved and then on the left let's say they're unsaved why there's a lot of apostasy in Christianity, and I, I think that's for, that that's because people don't hold to the authority, the authoritative word of the King James, because King James is authorized. It's authorized by the law, and it was authorized by God. So today, English-speaking people, in the dispensation to the Gentiles, have an English Bible, and we, we, I, it doesn't mention Jesus as Yeshua. It mentions. Jesus as Jesus, so the Lord whose name was given was Jesus Christ. Um, that's the name we're saved by. That's the authorized word. Because there's so many different versions of the word, you get so many variations of teachings, which I will draw in the um, in the diagram in a second. But um, in Judaism. Um, the Jews had the right to be the oracles of God, so all the scriptures come through the Jews. But that ended in Malachi. There's no authoritative word. We have the Torah, which is the five books of Moses, which contained the lawgiver, uh, the, the, the Ten Commandments, and then you have the Tanakh, or some of the, not completely, I'm not sure the exact uh, definition of the Tanakh, but I think the Jews call all the other books, the Tanakh. So you've got all the uh, the, um, the prophets and the other books, Psalms and Proverbs. That, well, that's included in the Torah, Tanakh, and the Torah is the law. And then after the, then um, in in Jewish um, tradition, it was, I, I think it probably reached from Moses passing on to remind all the children of that line of God's dealings with Israel and then to keep keep his word because the Lord has told them that he would never forsake them for them to keep the word because they've broken their covenant it's, it's ended so Jews are in it they find themselves in the dead end and they're waiting for their Messiah but their Messiah's already been so they will accept the false Messiah, but the Lord is faithful and he will rescue his branch out of the fire. He's going to snatch the, the, those who believe in Jesus out of the fire, but they've got to go through a fire, fire to humble them and then to bring them back to accept Jesus and, and they'll be waiting for when he comes. And that, that will be in the time of Jacob's trouble, which is a future prophecy. So rabbinical Judaism it teaches carries on from the tradition of what was right to then become apostasy and then it becomes uh, the rabbinical body of people believe that traditionally, although that it, it contains uh, much truth in the uh, Talmud, there's much truth in the Talmud, but it's an apostate book and it it it, it also teaches a, a lot of error. So. It, it's wrong, it's not completely true, it's it's in error, so it's wrong, two wrongs don't make a right. So if you mix the uh, error with truth, 
uh, what's true remains true in it but as a whole it's in error because it has error in it whereas the word of God is is pure it's infallible and it's complete uh, it you don't need to add anything to it you don't need to take anything away from it it's it's a standard and it's um, it can be proved by faith in, in Christ alone so uh, rabbin rabbinical Judaism and the Talmud is apostate because it holds to the that the opinions of men are greater than God so they start to lean away from the Torah and and depend on their flesh on their own intelligence over the righteousness of God this is the mistake that the that the Jews in Christ's day made they started holding to tradition and it got mixed with Babylonian beliefs and uh, uh, customs so it became apostate it, it wasn't true it wasn't a true straight line it become a bit bent so it wasn't it wasn't true it started to be changed so you got the left and right of the straight so holding to their traditions they've gone in error they've gone astray and that was helped along by the undermining of um, what the uh, Rabbi Antelman revealed was the Illuminati and certain groups and apostate Jews who hated the Jews, hated their own culture, they weren't believers in God and they wanted to destroy religion so they could uh, practice their own religion or bring in their, uh, their idea, their notion, their um, delusional vain notion of who they assumed the Messiah was who the Messiah was going to be to save the world it's completely it, none, none of it makes sense because they're, they're, they're just completely deluded and in, in error these Kabbalistic Jews and they hold to some almost like uh, doctrines of devils that these people are possessed and they just have gone about to, to create division to undermine the establishment of religion whether that's uh, Islam, Christianity or Judaism it's to destroy it, completely destroy it and there's so many mixed intentions it's all of the devil but it, but it reveals, this, this, this research reveals all certain proponents and people who planted those seeds, who planted those tares so it started to cause, it was a dividing to create uh, camps of extremes so it would um, lead people astray into either one camp or the other which takes people away from the truth and, and then the truth would be labelled um, like in um, Judaism it would be con conservative Judaism it, um, which is an error in itself and then there would be liberal Judaism to create free thinking and then there'd be a more a more stricter side to the paradigm uh, the antithesis so I'm just going to draw on the diagram just to simply show the, the left and right So it become apostate. And it's the same, exactly the same as Christianity. So you can see that fanning. So that's the airing of the truth going astray off the original. So that's all caused from Talmudism, Talmudism, Talmudism which the Jews still hold to. Even the, the faithful who, who believe that they're conservative, they're orthodox Jews, who believe they're faithful to the original Torah, which none of the Jews are faithful to the original Torah because they haven't believed. Although they practice some of the principles, they're, un they're unfounded because they've broken their covenant 
so it's created these left and right camps um, if you study though his work and his, his research in history you'll see that uh, you've got the uh, liberalizing of Judaism and then you've got the the extreme practice on the left of Kabbalism which is mystical mystism uh, where, uh, doing evil to bring in the Messiah, that's the vain notion that they believed. And then you've got the more traditional going in error that way to the right from the original word of God, which is the Torah, the law. And, and the, the Orthodox Jews still hold to the authority of the, of the word, but they also hold to the authority of uh, the uh, body of rabbis rabbinicalism and then you've got the other side who don't hold to the word of God which was planted, these seeds were planted to undermine the original word to give um, completely what man says over what God says so it's all a fanning of, of that error and that is exactly the uh, same with uh, Christianity because you've got um, the most obvious is um, Roman Catholicism you have um, Roman Catholicism. Let's get a different colour. So you've got Roman Catholicism, which is uh, apostate. It's not true. It's not the gospel. It's not the word of God. It's a sh it's a shadow of it. It's a uh, a bending of it, it's not true. And then on the other extreme, you got a Protestant, Prot the Church of England, Protestantism, which is uh, the Church of King Henry VIII, which is an antithesis. So it just fights one across the other. And sadly, the Jews today believe that uh, that either one of those Anglicis Anglicism, Catholicism, Catholicism. Uh, that's what they see as Christianity. Neither of them are them. They're both apostate. They're not what the word. They're not what the word of God says. So unfortunately, when the Jews see Christianity, they see the they they see the same thing as believers see. They see the divisions and the the fracturing of the truth. So you're getting all these different branches either on the left side or the right side like the splitting of the branch and shattering it and all the fibres peeling away discrediting the saviour, discrediting his word and then you've got so many different false teachings so you get these um, a fanning of the word and that's simply the apostasy you can do the research but that's what the bible teaches the Bible teaches that there's only one word, there's only one God, there's only one faith, there's only one baptism, and it's true, and that's the King James Bible. It's preserved in the King James Bible. And because you get all these other different versions of Bibles, you get these slight variations of what the truth is, you see. If you, you trust in the original word, you'll get a straight interpretation from God in his word because his word can't be argued against you can't argue with God you can't counsel what God has revealed you can't say roll over God I, I know better he's given his, his word and he's faithfully preserved it and this is the, simpli the simplicity of it and that's when you get all these different uh, teachings you, you know um, Armenianism and uh, Calvinism you get all these different camps throughout history, all, all going, going wrong from the beginning, like Brother Paul said. Some of these are the enemies to the cross of Christ. Others aren't so much. They've just gone astray teaching from the main core. Whereas on the left, you've got the complete, uh, complete full speeds. And if you follow those uh, from scratch, you're not... You, you're up, you're not going to get saved, you're not going to be grafted in and you will um, you could condemn a lot of souls to hell for 
if you're teaching the version of Christianity that hasn't been revealed in the Word of God. But um, even though a lot of these hold to the uh, core doctrine of the, that you're saved by grace, you're saved through faith alone in Jesus Christ. Um, but if you, a lot like the Church of England, uh, they teach so many other things that it's not the only way, there's so many additional extras. It's like uh, the Catholic Church believe in, in Jesus Christ, but they believe that you can only be saved through the Catholic Church. The, uh, on the other side uh, of the Church of England, they teach you've got to be baptised by sprinkling the water and keeping the commandments, and that neither of those work, works won't save you. You're saved by the, the Word of God. You're saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ. And, it, and uh, it's the same for the Jews. Jew and Gentile, the Lord has drawn all men unto himself. He's made the way that all men could be saved. Grafted into the same root is Judaism. I just want to uh, read um, just to show the uh, you know how um, that the prophets revealed the breaking of the covenant. So the Jews have no excuse to deny Jesus Christ. They can't rip out these um, prophecies. Uh, Zechariah. I'm only going to read Zechariah. Uh, it clearly shows how they broke their covenant. Start with uh, Zechariah 13. So if you're a Jew, um, you could search through all, all the types and shadows of the old covenant of Moses, of Joshua, all the prophecies, all teach of Jesus, and Jesus fulfilled all those prophecies. So my question is, well, what what Messiah are the are the Jews looking for? It it it's not going to be the true Messiah. It's either going to be a Messiah over this side of the fence, or a Messiah over that side of the fence. Uh, the Word of God reveals who the false Messiah is going to be. Even Daniel revealed who the false Messiah is going to be. Ezekiel and um, Isaiah. I'm going to read uh, just to show that the Jews, um, that God won't hear the Jews today unless they acknowledge it's the same for anyone, Jew or Gentile. God won't answer the prayer of anyone who doesn't believe in his Son and calls upon the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Because if you reject God's Son, you reject his heart. Jesus is the bosom of the Father full of grace and truth. They are identical in heart, mind and will and spirit. Jesus, it was the Father's will to give his Son up, to give his Word up. And it, it was the Word, Jesus, to come and die for the will of his Father, which was to save all mankind, to die for the sins of the world. If you reject his Son, his Word, if you reject the Word of God, Jehovah, you reject the Father. If you reject the Son, you reject the Father. If you reject the Father, you reject the Son. And therefore you reject God the Holy Spirit, which is the triune nature of God. They're all one heart and one mind. Uh, but they're three separate um, persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus was the full, came in the fullness of the Godhead. So there's one God and one Lord. But the Jews can't grasp that because they're not haven't been born of his spirit whereas some of the Old Testament prophets did believe they did they did grasp it they didn't understand it but they believed they believed in the Messiah to come and therefore they were justified through their faith so the only way to be justified and born again and graft, grafted back in if you're a Jew is through Jesus Christ and I'm going to show in uh, clearly in Zechariah 13 where the um, verse 6 and 7 right this is now now how the Jews read this and dismiss it I don't know and one shall say unto him this is verse 6 one this is a future prophecy and one shall say unto him 
What are these wounds in thy hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was um, wounded in the house of my friends. So how did how did the Messiah, how did the Jewish Messiah get wounds in his hands and his feet? Um, Isaiah chapter forty two. Um, I have you in Is Israel crying that they've been forgotten. And the Lord and God says, well, how can I forget you? I've got you engraved in my palms of my hands. Um, how, how did the Messiah get those wounds in his hands when he rescues Israel? Because this is talking about the Jacob's trouble into the millennial rest when, when the Messiah comes with his kingdom and rescues the Jews and it, this kingdom's built without hands in as prophesied by Daniel it, it's the rock cut without hands that's going to break down all the other kingdoms Jesus Christ has broke down all those kingdoms by his work on the cross and it will be realized in time in prophecy when he returns with his kingdom without that's made without man's hands it's, it's God's kingdom it's an eternal heart mind and will of God in Jesus Christ and he's going to come and rescue the Jews and then he's this is when this prophecy is going to be filled and they're going to say well what are those ha wounds in your hands and, and and the Lord's going to say well these are the wounds that I was rejected you rejected my people rejected me my friends rejected me in thine hands then he shall answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends, in his own people, he was wounded. But he said, forgive them, Father. I, I, they don't know, they know not what they do. So God's remained faithful in his covenant, but the Jews broke it. Verse 7, awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow. So the shepherd of God, God the shepherd, has um, awakened oh my sword against against himself so this is a prophecy of Jesus being sent by the Father and dying for the sins of the world uh, he would be on his own he would uh, lay his life down um, he had to be betrayed because he was sinless so he would lay his life down and that's a type of a Waco sword against my shepherd. So the father allowed the son to to be sin for the for the world, and he was um, by that he cut off his shepherd. Is the, the shepherd of the people of Israel? So God cut off his own shepherd for his own people. He cut off the head. Yeah. A Waco sword against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, so against his own people as well. So cutting the head off, cut all the body parts off. Uh, Saith the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And I will turn my hand upon the little one. So everyone suffered as a consequence, even the, the poor and the, 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 the weakest. Um, all suffered as a consequence. Um, Zechariah 11. Zechariah 11 speaks of the breaking, the prophecy of the breaking of the covenant, covenant of Israel. Like Moses said, they would all go whoring. God said to Moses, "All my people, as soon as they go into the land, they start going after God, because the Lord wanted the wickedness of those people in." Um, Palestine in the land of Canaan were idolatrous they were sacrificing their children having sex orgies and and just a reprobate behavior wicked behavior spilling blood killing dog eat dog and God said to Israel you're not going to be like that you're going to just you're going to remove them completely it's just for me to use you to get rid of them to police them completely destroy them they're so ripe in their wickedness like Sodom and Gomorrah it's another another idolatrous uh, city that God judged and God judged uh, uh, Palestine by the 
preparing Israel in the wilderness for 40 years, get, getting them strictly in line, and then giving them the right to go on God's behalf in his stead to judge these wicked, idolatrous uh, nations. And he chose a little stiff-necked nation, he said. You're stiff-necked from the beginning. You're, you won't bend. You are proud and uh, go against me. And, and the Lord said from the beginning they would go after these strange gods which God forbade them. And, uh, and ev at every turn they, w they would uh, challenge God. They would go up against God. Even going into the land to attack the giants they, they wouldn't believe and do it. So God said to Moses, they're going to go astray from the beginning. They're going to go apostate as soon as they realised the promise. There's only a few faithful people that remained faithful for a period and then, and then they started going a-whoring after these same practices. And when we get to Christ's time, you find how, how, how Judah and Israel were completely apostatised, apostatised. Uh, you've got Samaria, they were, they were mixed with pagan tradition, so they were looked down upon by the Jews, but even the Jews had their own Babylonian tradition, so it was a, an apostate sense. Like it is today, you've got a, a core belief that uh, remain true in a sense to their own idea of what the truth is, and then you have the apostasy on both sides, the Kabbalists or the paganistic side of uh, apostasy and the more um, self-righteous side the Pharisees and the Sadducees the other side the, the self-righteous so you've got this these two uh, extremes which aren't the true down the middle so Christ was the true and he laid his life down and it because um, he was rejected it fulfilled the prophecy of Zechariah that their covenant they would break their covenant and God broke it God withdrew his protection uh, God's not um, evil he didn't break his promise it was broken by the people he promised it to uh, so, it, so it's like oh you know I'll, I'll buy you a car and if you uh, break it um, I'll, I'll repair it but if you break it and I repair it, you're not having it back and put it in the garage. And that's what he did until you repent, until you come back and say sorry. And the way that they need to say sorry is accept his son. That's the only way they get their car back, they get their keys back, they get their rights back. They'd be grafted back into the branch, into the, into the root, into the, um, into the vine. Uh, chapter 11 verse 7 to 14 and I will feed the flock of slaughter even you are poor of the flock so that's clarified in the uh, chapter 13 even the poor would be uh, suffer and I took unto me two staves uh, the one I called beauty and the other I called bands and I fed the flock Three shepherds also I cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them, and their soul also had awed me. So three, three heads of the tribes of uh, Israel were cut off, they were killed um, in one month. Then said I, I will not feed you that that, uh, that, that dieth, let it die. Uh, I will not feed you, that that dieth, let it die, and that be cut off, let it be cut off, and let, let the rest eat every one of the flesh of another. So that's been fulfilled, um, Israel today, look at the Holocaust, they're cut off, let it be cut off, because God won't answer them, because they haven't accepted his son, so he's removed his protection. So that, that gives the power of the devil to go and destroy them, to go after them and with the destroying power that he has through the wickedness of the apost uh, the wicked Gentile nations, the, the Nazis and the Roman Catholics, completely annihilated the, the seed of Israel. 
and and God said, well, let it because I've done everything. I've gave my son. If it, he was rejected. There's nothing more I can do. So that's sadly why the the, tr the seed of Israel suffer to to this day, and that it will happen again. There will be a repeat of that times in Jacob's trouble. Then I said, I will not feed you that. That that die, let it die. That 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 is cut off, let it be cut off, and let the let the rest out. Every one of the flesh, eat the flesh of another, so they devour one another. And I took my staff, even beauty, who's a type, that's a Christ, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant which I have made with my, all the people. And it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. And I said unto them, If you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. So there's another prophecy that, that Jesus fulfilled. He was betrayed for thirty pieces of silver by the, the tribes of Judah, by the priests of Judah and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver which he cast to the potter's floor when he realised what he'd done and he, his gut spilled out and he, he was uh, damned and, and perished and the Lord said unto me cast it unto the potter a goodly price that I was prized out of them so that's how much they valued their Lord they put a price on the Lord 30 pieces of silver like he, Esau and the pottage he, that's how much he valued the, the blessings to come for his his people oh you, you can he, he sold it to Jacob for a bowl of pottage very similar so they, they sold their salvation they threw their salvation away for 30 pieces of silver let his blood be upon us and the Lord said unto me, Cast it to the potter a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Then I cut asunder my other staff, even bands. So Judas there is, was um, with the um, covenant to the Jews, the Jewish uh, bloodlines that would inherit the uh, authority to officiate in the temple uh, Levi and Judah to be the high priest and the uh, priesthood that, that that relationship that covenant was broken it was broken off by beauty so beauty laid down his life and bands was Judas who was and the covenant between Israel and Judah and the tribes of Israel with, with the Messiah and he broke it even bands that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. So there we have it, that, that prophecy was fulfilled. So the Jews today are broken off and the Lord has, has left them in a cursed state and they, needed to, they need to be grafted in. And what they need to do is not look at um, Roman Catholicism and Protestantism, 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 I can never say that word, and uh, not look to that, but look to the Word of God, look to the Lord Jesus Christ, and have faith alone in Him alone, to know that your Messiah, to know that your Saviour, who's Christ, has died, and He loves He loves all the Jews, and He died to save the Jews and the Gentiles, and that believing through Him you will be restored back to the covenant, a new and everlasting covenant, and you'll be saved, and you'll be neither Jew nor Gentile, you'll be one in Christ. You'll be one in Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit in heavenly places. And so that's my um, sim simple chart, the simplicity of Christ, of salvation through faith alone in Christ alone. The old and the new covenants, the fulfilling of the prophecies of Christ and the establishing of the new and everlasting covenant which was the laying down of the Messiah, spilling his precious holy blood and being lifted on the cross to draw all men unto himself, uh, Jew and Gentile. 
And so that is the simplicity of the apostasy and that is simply by the simplicity of Christ which reveals all that is untrue. You don't need to um, know all these areas because the truth was made an open show of them. You, once you have the truth you can search out these things and see the divisions in both sides. Judaism, but if Judah, Judah if the Judaism doesn't accept Christ, it remain unbroken, and it will remain in that apostate sense, and that will bring about Jacob's trouble. You cannot deny the word of prophecy, so that that will come. So you're not going to get escape the, the tribulation period. You're not going to escape the false Messiah, the pr the wicked prince spoken by Daniel. And you, you are going to go through the fire. And if you, you reject Jesus Christ, you're, you're lost and you're going to perish. You're going to perish through that period. It, but you need to believe today. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus is eternal. And what Jesus has done is fulfilled. It's completed and eternal. And he's on the right hand of God. He... he he is the word of God, the authority of the Father, sent and given, gave himself and overcome sin and death to restore us back to that, the presence, the bosom of the Father. And the only way to receive that spirit indwelling in your heart, to be born again, is what Jesus taught. You must be born again, you must be born of his spirit. You have to acknowledge your own sin and accept the righteousness, the righteous branch. It's all, in, it's all in Zechariah. The branch, the high priest, the grace, the temple, the living temple, the dying of the Messiah, and the new and everlasting com co um, covenant, the two lampstands, which will be the two witnesses in Jacob's trouble, which will be a testimony to Israel to draw them unto the Messiah and to prepare them for his return, the second coming of their Messiah. That's why they confused because there's two, two instances of the Messiah. There's the humble Messiah who dies and gets the wounds in his hands. Then there's the judge, the just Messiah coming back, the righteous Messiah. It's the same Messiah because due, due, uh, the Jews rejected him, he's going to come back a second time to judge the world and rescue Israel in the middle of it. He's not going to, he's not going to forsake his branch. That branch is going to be tried, brought out of the fire and grafted back in to the vine, who's Jesus Christ, who David was a type. And then he's going to restore them the uh, kingdom. Uh, the Jews aren't going to build up the kingdom. The world aren't going to help them. The world is going to destroy them. It's going to deceive them. It, it, it's corrupt. And any corrupt thing doesn't bring forth good fruit. It, it goes sour, it goes off. You need the pure living vine from the pure and holy root. And the Jews still hold the. They are from that root. And the right, the good Jews still get the blessings. And then they, but they root they root wherever they are because they, they're off that, that branch but they're cut off from the, the main branch so they bring forth good fruit but they need to repent to, to be grafted into the vine to, for the, the true fruit because you know they're, they're corrupted and if they're wicked Jews like Kabbalistic Jews who follow uh, the, the extremes of uh, traditions of men which is all rooted from rabbinical Judaism it, it, it teaches either or there's no standard the standard is in the Torah and the word which they do some hold to which is true but, but it goes astray it, it, it's like a reed in the wind it's not it's not it's not straight it's not um, it's not solid it's not the word it's not Jesus Christ so um, I'm going to leave that simple, the simplicity of uh, the word, 
the word in the Old Testament and in the New and Everlasting Covenant, the New Testament, and the Holy Bible and the King James Word. And I'll close there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.